They call this a sport wagon. Is it more sport or more wagon? It's a key distinction. What if it's only a vague smattering of both? Let's drive the 2012 Acura TSX Sport Wagon and check the tech. You may have heard there are folks who actually missed the old Honda Accord Wagon and thought, who the hell would miss that? Well, I missed that. And this is a very close example of what it would be today. In fact, this TSX Sport Wagon is called the Accord Wagon when it's sold in Europe. It's very much the TSX with a tidy little wagon compartment molded on the back. Very faithful to the lines otherwise. It's worth noting that the Audi A4, Mercedes C-Class, BMW 3 Series, and everything Lexus are no longer found as wagons here. Acura's either way out in front or a little bit behind. Well, not much changes inside these Acura cabins. You've seen this big old bosom thing here with the, I'm not gonna say it, right there on the front. Lots of buttons, that's an Acura thing. They seem to have brought the number down a little bit, but not enough so that you don't go, wow, that's a lot of buttons when you first get in this car. What hasn't evolved quite so much is that navigation uh, interface. It looks the same as it has for ages with minor improvements, but it's still a little bit on the Fisher Price side to my eye. It doesn't befit this high tech sort of urban elegance that you find in the rest of the cabin. But the key is how does the voice command work? Let's take it for a tour. After the beep, please say a command. Navigation. How would you like to? Address. Would you like to find? City. After the beep. San Francisco. Seven. One. You get the idea. It's fairly good at recognizing what I say, but notice every single piece of data is another beep response sequence. The better nav systems now, particularly in some of the German cars, you just blurt it all out. AM and FM, but no HD radio on this guy. Your satellite radio button's there. Here is your optical disc and hard drive toggle. 15 gigabyte hard drive built into this thing. Already becoming passe, to be honest. And under aux, you got the good stuff. Bluetooth streaming, your iPod or USB connection in here. You also have an aux jack you can hook up to. Now, the Bluetooth audio is pretty rudimentary. That's what you get when you're playing Bluetooth sound. No meta tags. Some dopey logo and a go to Acura.com message that looks like Drek. One choice only on the gearbox, also taking us back to the old days, a five-speed automatic. You do have paddles up here in drive. Those will temporarily influence the gear shift to the gear you want. Then it will drop back into drive mode, full automatic. In sport, you've got a much better response, holds RPMs higher, locks out of top gear. And this is also a transmission that should, in a corner, downshift or at least hold that gear instead of upshifting like a dumb box right in the middle of a turn at speed. Now, of course, the Acura TSX Sport Wagon is a wagon. Not really much of one, though. Of course, I'm biased because I drive a wagon. Roll back the tonneau cover and you see you've got a very Audi A4-ish cargo bay. I'd love to get them side by side, not to compare the volume, that you can get from specs, but to compare the usable shape of getting in and out of it. You see, these stylish compact wagons have all this rounded occlusion around here. You really want that to be a clean sweep because this couple of inches of flange and trim can make the difference between getting your stuff home from Ikea or having to pay 60 bucks to get it delivered. Now you've got tons of little smugglers boxes all over the floor here. A little one here, one like it on the left. Here's this big one in the middle, big deep well there. And then within that, you've got another compartment of compartments. So lots of places to put small things so they aren't flying around. That's a good thing. But I'm concerned about big things. Now here in the hood, before we even get to the engine, let's get to the outrage. You can't get Honda's rather excellent corporate V6 in this car because it's a wagon. There's some real bad bodyism going on here. The sedan will let you option into the bigger motor, but this one is stuck with the 2.4 liter side saddle inline four. Perfectly good motor, just a hell of a lot less of it. 201 horsepower, 170 foot pounds of torque. Moves this 3,600 pound car to 60 in a perfectly fine 7.5 seconds, but perfectly fine. The MPG on this car is a meh for a four cylinder 2230. Now, 
as you've noticed, there's not much more conventional a car on the road than this guy. Five-speed automatic, 2.4 liter four, front wheel drive, blah de blah de blah But on the road, it actually turns into a little better package than it looks on paper. They've got this car tuned in a way that I like. Very responsive at part throttle. In other words, when you're tooling around town or driving normally on the freeway, you've got lots of responsiveness in the first, I don't know, third of the pedal travel. That's real world driving. Now when you get further into it, more pedal, more speed, want to sustain the acceleration, that's where the power plant pretty much starts to flatten out. It runs out of gas when you get above, you know, mid throttle, 4,000 RPM, you're really starting to push it, eh, it becomes less impressive than it was in the first few moments of getting off the line. But that works well for an everyday driver. The ride is, I wouldn't say harsh, but I would say utilitarian. It's, uh, it's, it's sport, but without great sport handling. It's not a bad car to drive, it handles well, but it doesn't give you that feeling of handling that a small BMW or Audi would give you. Of course, it doesn't give you that sticker shock either. To get the most out of this car, you really do have to shift it, drop it into sport mode, get on the paddles, otherwise, you're not going to be in the exact right rev range for an engine that, like I mentioned, runs out of breath a little bit. Your overall impression of driving it is a fun, light, tossable car, not one that is a tremendous performance powerhouse. Acura would have to give you the V6, the super handling all-wheel drive, and, I don't know, another eight or ten grand on the sticker to get there. They're going after a different market. Okay, this car bases at 32.2 for your TSX Sport Wagon, but that's without the tech package. Since you're watching a video about this car from CNET, I assume you want that. 36.50 additional. Without it, you kind of miss out on all the cool stuff I've shown you. And you need that because this car doesn't even have that much cool stuff. But the tech package does bring you 15 gig hard drive, DVD, surround sound, rear camera, and power liftgate. All of that for 36.50 is a pretty good deal.